The peatland itself, the peatland complex across both countries, we think is about 145,000 square kilometers. To put that into context, it's a little bit bigger than the size of the whole of England. Beneath the Congo Basin rainforest lies the biggest uninterrupted area of tropical peatland ever discovered. It could be key to fighting climate change. In terms of carbon storage, now this number is very uncertain, but we think it's about 30 billion tonnes. So that's about three years worth of all the anthropogenic emissions, all the emissions from humans, from fossil fuel use and burning forests, all combined three years worth stored in this one area in the central Congo Basin. Tomorrow I'm off to the Democratic Republic of Congo to the geographical heart of the Congo Basin. A team of researchers from the UK and Democratic Republic of Congo are working in the jungle to confirm the extent and depth of the carbon-rich peat. So what we have is a map that we've created from satellite data from three different satellites and we've combined all that data to tell us where is waterlogged all year round, where it's got the kind of vegetation that we expect peatland to be underneath. We can have a good estimate from satellite data, but actually we need ground truthing data on the ground to say there's definitely peat here. So what we do actually boots on the ground in the field, travel through the forest in that straight line, going down into the swamp, and then uh, every 100 meters, okay. we'll take a peat core, okay. a mini peat core, where we'll just test the depth. The team has already made a surprising discovery. So here we've got a peat sample from two and a half meters to three meters deep. Yeah, that's really surprising actually, because normally when you're just a little bit close to the edge, you know you're finding peat of 30 centimetres, maybe 50 centimetres. But here we haven't really walked very far at all. We're already finding three metres. So we would expect this to be much shallower. So that suggests that in this region, there might be more peat than we predicted. And that makes it much more important in terms of climate change, because when we have deep peat, we have a lot of carbon stored. So uh, we've taken the core, taken a photo of it, made a description. Now we're going to transfer it into um, some cling film and a plastic pipe to try and keep the core intact and whole. So we'll end up with a full peat profile and hopefully we'll manage to get that back um, to the labs completely intact and then it can be used for all sorts of analysis. Peat is semi-decomposed plant matter that has built up beneath the flooded forest over thousands of years. The waterlogged surface prevents it fully decomposing and releasing carbon into the atmosphere. So we know that this peatland is quite close to the edge. If it dries out a bit, then it starts to release carbon. And that could happen from a number of reasons. So it could be to do with selective logging. It could be to do with logging all the forest. It could be removing the vegetation and draining it for, for example, oil palm or other large-scale agricultural commodities. Draining peatlands for palm oil contributed to the 2015 forest fires in Indonesia that killed thousands and led to record-breaking carbon emissions. Massive peatland fires now occur every year in Indonesia. It has become the new normal. Palm oil is racing across Africa, but it hasn't arrived in the central peatlands yet, but it could do in the future. Industrial agriculture and further expansion of industrial logging would also affect local communities who both rely on and help protect the forest. So one of the ways that local people utilize the peatland is for fishing. And if you drain that peatland, then you can't fish. So I think it's really important to recognize the role of the communities in the protection of both the forests and the peatlands. You know, we, I'm here studying this because these peatlands are intact. And the reason they're intact is because the local people have kept them intact. So they are really the core protectors of the forests and the peatlands combined. And they need to be centrally involved in any decisions that are made about the future of these lands. The future of the world's forests is on the agenda at this year's UN Climate Conference in Germany, COP23. Professor Lewis and his team are hoping their research will lead to greater protections for the Congo Basin rainforest and the massive carbon store that lies beneath it. Currently, the peatlands 
are naturally quite well, well protected. And the question is, is what's going to happen into the future? And that's a decision for policymakers and local people. And I'm here to try and provide the best information to be able to make those future decisions on. For more stories on the world's forests and other environmental news, subscribe to Unearthed.